Yo, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, AKA DJ Bazooka. And I just wanna say thank you so much to all the new subscribers here on this channel. And shout out to some of you guys who follow me on Instagram and TikTok as well. Um, I posted a video about why it's important to use an external mixer, especially if you're a mobile DJ, a few days ago on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, basically I kinda wanna show you guys my whole setup and how I basically set everything up, plug everything in from start to finish, and uh, just kind of go a little bit more in depth just because you can't really do that on Instagram and it only allows you to post a minute and 30 second video on a reel. So uh, this is gonna be a longer video kind of explaining things more in detail so that you guys understand what's going on. All right, so the first thing that I like to do once I kind of have my deck set up, whether I'm using turntables in a mixer or a controller, is I like to fire up Serato, play a song, and just make sure that all of my levels are correct. So that, I'm gonna be checking the trim, gain, and my master. So as, as long as I'm not redlining, I'm good with that, and everything looks good on here, I'm basically good to go onto my external mixer. And I'm using two XLRs for my left and right channel um, through my mixer here, so channels one and two. And then I'm also checking all of my EQ settings as well as my EQ settings on my um, mixer and my external mixer, right? So my highs, mids, and lows, all of that is good. Same here, we're good to go. And then also my levels and my masters are turned down. What's really important is I have these two pads pushed in and they're activated. Basically by having that pushed in, I'm lowering the overall volume for these two channels by 26 decibels. Now, depending on how hot of a signal that you're getting through your mixer, you may not need to do that. But for me, I like to do that because then I can go ahead and really use the gain if I need to, or kind of assess the situation once I get into the room. When I didn't have these on, I would constantly peak and I wasn't sure why. And I think it was because basically my signal was way too hot coming from the mixer. But after pressing these two buttons in, which is gonna be the pad for these two lines, everything was good. I wasn't peaking anymore on this mixer. Now the next thing that I have for channels three and four would be for my mics. Typically channel three will be a wired mic for myself and then channel four would be a wireless mic for my uh, client. So the wired mic, obviously I'm gonna be behind the DJ booth 90% of the time, so I don't really need a wireless mic. Um, so it's just a lot easier for me to have a mic ready to go at all times. And my wireless mic, um, it's gonna be for my client, right? So if they want, kinda wanna move around in the room to give their speech, make an announcement or whatever, um, it's a little bit easier for them to be mobile than have them stand right next to me with a wired mic. But if the wireless mic ever fails, I have a wired mic that they could use, so always have a backup. It's part of you being professional and just kinda have another solution if something were to go wrong. Moving on over is gonna be my RCA inputs. Again, I like to use these inputs for um, tapping in a iPhone or like an iPad basically a secondary music source if even if you have an iPad or iPod that works as well so the cable would be you know it's going to be a, a red and a white RCA into like a headphone jack and then of course you're going to need whatever dongle to fit your device and then moving on over here um, these are going to be my outputs so typically I have two XLRs for this video is I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you an example but typically two XLRs that would go into both of my subs, or if you're running only one sub, they would go into the inputs of that one sub. But one XLR per sub is how I have it set up right now. And I'll kind of get into that equipment in a bit here. So as you can see, um, basically I have the master turned all the way down as well as my levels, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you guys on the speaker side of things now and the sub. So here is one of the speakers, and then here we have my sub. This is the KS-112 that I'm rocking. And for this video, I'm using the K8.2s. Typically, I use the K12s, um, but all my speakers and subs are all from QSC. It's just what 
I use and trust. Um, but yeah, they're, they're great and they sound good. But essentially what I said earlier before is the XLR that comes out from my external mixer would go into my output, I'm sorry, my input into my sub, and then I have an XLR coming out from my sub into my speaker. Now, if you're not using an external mixer, you would just do that same process and basically run it from your DJ mixer to your sub, like so. And if you don't have a sub, then obviously you just run it into your speaker up top like that. Um, when it comes to how I have my speaker set up, I usually have it at the 12 o'clock for both the sub and the mixer. I'm sorry, it's the sub and the speaker. But for this video, I'm only gonna do it one notch both because I don't wanna blast my neighbors. And let me show you guys how I kind of set everything up. Again, we're gonna go ahead and just play a song that we can get our levels right, speakers are turned on. I'll go ahead and turn this to unity or zero and then start turning up my levels here. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it all the way up to unity like that. And there you go, now we're getting some sound. Cool. And then from here, I would go ahead, turn this down. From here, I'll go ahead and turn up the volume on the speaker and the sub until basically until I feel like it's at a right level, kind of walk through the room and just make sure that it sounds good from where I'm standing and kind of go from there. And that's pretty much it when it comes to setting up your speaker and your sound, all of your mixers and your DJ controller or your DJ mixer. Uh, the most important thing is while you're playing your set is to make sure you're not peaking or you're not red lighting in the red um, on your mixer and your external mixer. And also every now and then make sure you check your speakers and your sub. Sometimes on the back of the sub, they'll have like a peaking, like a limiter light. If it's flashing red, typically it's red, um, then you know you wanna kinda lower down the volume a little bit to avoid damaging your speakers. As long as you have everything dialed in and everything is, is at a good volume, you're pretty much good to go. And the other thing too is you have to keep in mind the different environments that you play. So sometimes, sometimes you're playing outdoors, sometimes you're playing indoors. You just wanna make sure that wherever you're at, especially you should be positioned close to the dance floor because that's where most of the sound should be. Now, you don't have to really worry about getting the sound out um, depending on the vent, right? You don't have to worry about getting the sound all the way back to the room because the one thing is when it comes to the dancing portion of the event, you want the sound to be focused on the dance floor. Your job is not to have sound all the way to the back of the room because some people might want a break and they don't want to be next to a loud speaker or anything like that. So kind of keep, try to keep those things in mind when you're setting your sound up. But if it's a full on like dance party, like a rave or something like that, then yeah, maybe you do need more sound. But again, think of the situation, think of the environment that you're in and think about the format of the event. That's what's gonna set you apart from other DJs from being professional because now you're looking at the other details, the logistics of the event and the venue and basically whatever you need to do to make that event successful. So now that we're done with our event, we're gonna go ahead and pack everything up and basically close everything down, shut everything down, and let me show you guys the process for that. All right, so we got some music playing. Typically, I'll make an announcement. Hey, this was the last song or whatever. Then I'll start to fade the music down like this, right? And then turn everything down like so, and then turn all this down. And before I power anything off, I'm gonna go over to my speakers and power those off first. So go ahead and turn everything down. And you basically just want to go ahead and do it in reverse order. So first I powered up the sub, then this, which is the top speaker. So now I'm gonna go ahead and power this one off first and then go ahead and power down the sub. 
And then now I'm gonna go ahead, power this one down, and then this one down. Boom, you're all good to go. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're new here, please subscribe to this channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Um, follow me on my Instagram. I'll provide that in the description below. Um, but that's it for now. Peace.